guys, I'm Miss Bufford, and in this video, we're going to talk about electronegativity and chemical bonding. So our learning goals here are to be able to distinguish ionic, covalent, and metallic bonds from one another, and to be able to identify polar and nonpolar bonds. So we want to talk about electronegativity because electronegativity really, really dictates the type of bonds that are formed or the electronegativity of the atoms involved in forming that bond. And so we're going to recap um, what electronegativity is, and then we're going to talk about how it determines the bond type. So um, remember that metals have lower electronegativity values, meaning that they're not good at attracting electrons towards themselves, and they're not even very good at holding on to their own valence electrons. And because of this, they tend to lose their valence electrons in chemical reactions when chemical bonds are formed. Nonmetals on the other side of the periodic table have higher electronegativity values, meaning that they're good at pulling electrons in or attracting electrons towards themselves. And atoms that are good at attracting electrons towards themselves are already going to be really good at holding on to their own valence electrons. So they're not going to want to let them go. Um, because of this, these atoms tend to gain or share electrons in chemical reactions depending on what type of element they're reacting with. And we also want to remember that valence electrons are the ones that participate in chemical reactions or the ones that are acting to form those chemical bonds. And there are three types of chemical bonds that we are going to learn about that can occur depending on the type of elements involved in that interaction. So let's go ahead and talk about those. Um, so the, the three main bond types are ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and metallic bonds. And so we're going to start off by talking about ionic bonds first. Um, ionic bonds occur between atoms that have a really large difference in their electronegativity values. So one atom is going to have a really high electronegativity, like a nonmetal. And the other atom is going to have a really low electronegativity, so it's going to be a metal. And in this case, we have what's a transfer of valence electrons that's occurring. So if you take a look at these little atoms up above the ionic bonds word, um, you'll see that there's a, a literal straight up transfer of electrons from one atom to the other. And it's that more electronegative atom that's pulling that, those valence electrons in towards itself and taking them from the atom with lower electronegativity. All right, and you'll see... On the next slide here in a minute, I'm going to show you a picture of a periodic table that gives you an electronegativity value for each element on the periodic table. And if we're talking about, you know, two different elements, then you can take the electronegativity values of each element and find the difference. And if the difference of those electronegativity values is equal to or greater than 1.8, then you're going to have an ionic bond forming between those two atoms. Um, because the electronegativity difference is great enough for one atom to take an electron from another atom. All right, so covalent bonds, though, um, these kinds of bonds occur between atoms that have a very small difference in their electronegativity, but the atoms involved both have similar or equal high electronegativity values. So these types of bonds occur tend to occur between non-metal atoms, so all the atoms that have relatively high electronegativities. And in this case, because both atoms involved have high electronegativities and they're both really good at attracting electrons and holding on to their own valence electrons, they're not going to want to give up electrons, and so they're going to have to end up sharing electrons. They're going to compromise and share. Right, And there are two types of covalent bonds. There are polar covalent bonds where, you know, atoms are, they both have high electronegativities, but one has a much higher electronegativity and it's kind of hogging the electrons. So there's an unequal sharing of those valence electrons. And so if we're taking a look at those electronegativity values, then the difference in the electronegativities between the two atoms involved is going to be um, between 0 0.5 and 1.7. So if it's 0 0.5 all the way up to a number between 1.7 or all the way up to a number um, of 1.7, then it's going to be a polar covalent bond where the atoms are sharing electrons. There's no transfer of electrons. 
All right, and so let's take a look at those covalent bonds again. Here I have a little animation to show you. There we go. Um, and then we have a nonpolar covalent bond where there's just an equal sharing. So the electronegativities are so similar or identical that neither atom pulls on the electron more than the other. And we have what's called, you know, basically a sharing, an equal sharing of electrons. And so if the difference in electronegativity values for these two atoms is either equal to or less than 0 0.4, then it's going to be a nonpolar covalent bond, so equal sharing of electrons. And then the last type of bonding that we have is a metallic bond. And um, here we also have two atoms that are in you know close contact with one another, and they have very similar electronegativities, but their electronegativity values are very low. So these are all metal atoms, okay? So if we have two metals... Um, metal atoms that are coming into close contact, what happens is that their electronegativities are so low that they end up shedding their, their valence electrons. And we call that delocalization of their electrons. And this only occurs between metal atoms, all right? So we don't have to calculate the difference in electronegativity to identify me uh, metallic bonding. We can just recognize that, hey, those are two metal atoms, and so that's going to be metallic bonding, all right? So let's go ahead and here's that table that I told you about. We've got all these different electronegativity values listed on it um, for most of the atoms here on our periodic table or, or elements. And what I would like you to do is try to determine whether the bonds that are going to be uh, formed between these atoms given are going to be ionic, polar covalent, nonpolar covalent or metallic. So go ahead and pause the video real quick and we'll come back and we'll talk about it together here in just a second. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to pause the video and you were able to figure out um, what type of bond is going to form between these atoms. So let's go ahead and start with strontium and oxygen. Strontium is right here on our periodic table and oxygen is all the way up, up here. And so oxygen is 3.44, strontium is 0 0.95, and we can just set that up just so we can subtract the smaller number from the larger number. There's no big deal there. And we end up with a difference of 2.48. So that is much higher than that 1.8 that we said it had to be um, in order to be ionic. So that is definitely going to be an ionic bond. Um, and another thing that we can do is those atoms are on opposite ends of the periodic table. We can see that there's a big difference in their electronegativity. Um, so we and we, we've got one metal and one nonmetal, so we can identify it as ionic just by you know looking at the types of atoms that are involved. Um, but it's important to understand once we get into atoms that are kind of closer together on the periodic table um, that that electronegativity really tells you what type of bonding is occurring. All right, for carbon and oxygen, oops, I went ahead and and uh, exposed the answer early, but carbon is right there on the periodic table. We've already circled oxygen, so 3.44 minus 2.55 gives us a difference of 0 0.89, and that is going to be a polar covalent um, bond that's formed between carbon and oxygen. And oxygen is going to be the more electronegative element here, so it's going to be hogging those electrons in this interaction. All right, then we have zinc and copper. So zinc is right here, and copper is right there. They're right next to each other. They're both metals. So we can just say that that is a metallic bond, all right? Uh, the next one, we have sulfur and selenium. So sulfur is right here and selenium is right here. Those are really close to each other as well. They're both nonmetals. So let's take a look at their difference in electronegativity. That's a very small difference, 0 0.04. And so that's going to be a nonpolar covalent bond. So those atoms are going to be sharing those electrons pretty equally between themselves. And then we've got lithium, which is right here, and chlorine, which is right here. And those are on opposite ends of the periodic table. One's a metal, one's a nonmetal. So let's take a look at their electronegativities. And we've got a difference of 2.18. So that's definitely going to be an ionic bond. And then chromium and iron. So we've got chromium here and iron here. 
Those are both metals, and so that is going to be a metallic bond. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please go ahead and write those in your notebooks and be ready to ask during class, and I will see you guys then. Thanks for watching Buffered Chemistry. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more chemistry help.